where we see students with much higher stats than yours yep. not getting in because they're not themselves. Mission Accepted Season 2, Episode 13. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm excited to be chatting with you today about your application, your successful application to medical school. Let's do a, a brief overview. How many application cycles? How many interviews? How many acceptances? What does that look like so far? Sure. So this is my first application cycle. Um, and I have uh, received 10 interviews uh, thus far, um, and I've received six acceptances. 10 interviews, six acceptances. Mm -hmm. No big deal. No big deal. Okay. What led to that success? Because that is very uncommon success in the medical school application game. For sure. So um, I would say a huge part of my application cycle, what I presume to be successful is um, I didn't like formulate my application or my undergraduate experience in order to get into medical school. I didn't decide to pursue medical school until a little bit later in my undergrad. I had considered health professions for a while, but I was never like formulating my experiences to fit a certain, um, you know, mold. And I think that led to um, a lot of like really authentic experiences that I can talk about pretty easily and that I love talking about. Um, and perhaps that made me a more interesting applicant. Um, but I feel like that was probably the, the major factor for me. Okay. Let me paraphrase. Sure. You were yourself. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing how, how it works. Like yeah. you, you don't go in going, I need to prove to them that I just was born to be a doctor and I have all the skills necessary to be a doctor. That's what I need. I don't know why I have a Texas accent when I'm doing that, <laughs> but it's just crazy, right? Mm -hmm. it, you yeah. were yourself, period, mm -hmm. end of story. Typically, students with that amount of success also have really good stats. We, we haven't scrolled down to that part of your application yep. yet. <laughs> Are your stats, stats are okay? They're, they're okay. All right, all right, good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at them. Awesome. Okay. Any issues with your application that you were concerned about when you were submitting? I think that after watching your videos, like I didn't think my stats were incredible, but I knew that they were okay. I had some withdrawals early in my college like career that I was a little bit worried about. I um, was one of those students that like took classes over the summer. And I remember hearing people tell me that I should I don't try know to take where that semester. comes from. It's just, just I know. such a dumb I don't myth. know either because <laughs> only other students have told me that and no, no advisors have told me that. Um, yeah. But yeah, so a little, I, I would say it wasn't your um, pre-med version of what uh, a like stellar student would yeah. be and also my withdrawals, but um, yeah. Awesome. All right, let's rock and roll. Let's take a look at your application. Um, so starting off, you submitted day one, at night, not bad. Yes. Did, was that yes. strategic? Like you wanted to see how the day panned out? Are, are there any big issues coming up on Twitter from the AAMC or is that just um, when you were able to get it? So I knew that I wanted to submit the first day, but I work a eight to six, not a okay. nine to five, but I was not in the headspace, I think, to hit submit at 7.30 before I left for work yeah. and I wanted to make sure everything was good um, and double, triple, quadruple check everything. So yeah. I think that's why it was in the evening. It, it probably wasn't even open at 7.30 in the morning, uh, assuming probably. you're Eastern that's time. So that, yeah. that's definitely part of it as well. Awesome. Yep. Let's uh, let's rock and roll. So you got it, you got it done right away, which is awesome. We have uh, a couple languages there: French and English. Red flag section: no big red flags, which is great. We don't like red flags. Um, they they are overcomable, typically, mm -hmm. usually, sometimes. Um, uh, and then we get into grades, and we start off Chem one thirty one. Oh yeah, with a C plus. Mm -hmm. Why wasn't it over then? Why wasn't like you. my like you? You're just you. Like I'm. I'm just not cut out to be a, a college totally. student. Not cut. I mean, <laughs> but it, it sounds like you weren't pre med to begin with. So so that yeah. that helped. I think a huge thing is like because I wasn't pre med. Like in you know my my social circles or whatever. My initial failures. I wasn't 
surrounded by that energy that like, oh, you're done if you get a C. <laughs> um, I was, you know, I, I was involved in other stuff in college. I had my my Frisbee team and everything and like they didn't care about my grade. So um, <laughs> can you throw so the Frisbee? I, can you catch yeah, the Frisbee? Yeah, much more yeah. focused on how well I can throw. But um, <laughs> I, I think that I had some great mentors. I had people who saw past my grades who like, I, I knew that it wasn't over for me, even though I knew that maybe I needed to work on my chemistry a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I had awesome people who believed in me and that helped me move on from those grades and, and keep trying and, and do better later on. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So not a great start with that C plus. And then mm-hmm. you took chemistry two pass fail. So you're like, whatever, oh, yeah. I'll just take a pass fail. I I don't care. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, yeah. So we look at the rest of your grades, lots of A's in there. Uh, we see those couple withdrawals, but mm-hmm. overall pretty decent grades. And so we see this freshman GPA, this first year GPA 285 with that C plus included. Obviously mm-hmm. it doesn't look great, but mm-hmm. from one grade, it's, it's uh, it, it dro- drops it down a bunch. Mm-hmm. Overall, decent stats, right? 375 cumulative yep. GPA, 366 science GPA, good. Yep. All right, really good. And then we um, scroll down a little bit and we look at your MCAT score and we go 510, like that's below average for matriculated medical students. <laughs> How the heck do we get 10 interviews and lots of acceptances so far? And so this is where I always come back to the stats just have to be good enough, right? Your mm-hmm. stats are good enough. You've Mm -hmm. gotten tons of activity. People like who you are. They Mm -hmm. obviously like who you portrayed yourself to be in your application, to want Mm -hmm. to invite you for an interview, and then Mm -hmm. have liked you at the interview, to want Mm -hmm. to accept you. Mm -hmm. And that initial statement, paraphrased, was you were yourself. So let's see who you are uh, going down into the activities. Sounds good. Uh, Poster presentations, great. So Mm -hmm. you did some research. and uh, very interesting, right? Uh, teaching empathy in medicine and attainable measurable skills. Very, very interesting uh, topic there. Uh, wilderness upgrade for medical yeah. professionals. So a wilderness medicine course. Did this come up at all in any of your interviews? Most of them. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's a very interesting thing, right? Wilderness medicine. What does that mean? What did you learn? Yeah. What did you do? Mm-hmm. Um, why yeah. did you take a wilderness medicine course? Um, I like medicine. I like the outdoors. And this was an awesome way to combine those two things. Um, and I got to go do it in the Wasatch, um, range in Utah, which was an awesome experience. Um, something like reflecting on it. That was the most awesome thing is like, I wasn't, I wasn't only EMTs. I was an EMT, but there was paramedics, doctors, nurses, um, the whole gambit. And so I like ran scenarios with an experienced paramedic as my patient and, uh, an ER doctor from the Pacific Northwest as my partner. So it was like a super rad experience um, for multiple reasons. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So more of the story, get out of your uh, kind of comfort zone and go out and play in the woods. That's fun. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Definitely is fun. Um, and people like to talk about it because it comes up in your interviews. Yep. So we have here some paid employment medical clinical running from January 21 through kind of expected matriculation in 2022. So this seems like this is the bulk of your job. This is this is the bulk of what takes up uh, your yeah. your nine to five, your eight to six. Right. So um, clinical uh, clinic assistant, primary care, sexual reproductive health. So clinical experience, great clinical mm-hmm. experience talking about it. You have a nice little story here. You have dialogue, Mm -hmm. which I typically don't recommend, but it works. Um, Mm -hmm. And at at the end of the day, you have a story. It shows who you are um, Mm -hmm. without just talking about everything that you did and and how it's taught you to be a great doctor and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. solid, solid stuff. Um, research, right? Uh, research, you're, you're actively involved in it, uh, projecting out again to the start of medical school. And mm-hmm. you talk about, again, this Institute for Innovations in Medical Education. It's mm-hmm. very interesting. Why are you drawn to this type of research, which is looking at um, kind of, it seems like how physicians, how providers act yeah. with patients? Yeah. Um, I, I think that a big part of why I was like drawn to being in medicine was just like 
awesome, like awesome empathic providers. So I think that's, and I've also seen not empathic providers in my various roles, um, working in healthcare. And I, I felt the difference it made for me as a patient and seeing the difference it's made for other patients. So I think it's a really important thing. And when the opportunity came along for me to get involved in researching empathy in medicine, especially because it's not super well understood. Um, I was really excited to get involved in that. And, um, it's really interesting. It relates to burnout, relates to patient outcomes, relates to patient, um, you know, just like following with the plan. Uh, so yeah. And I have awesome research mentors too for that. So that's awesome. Um, Mm-hmm. So I, I highlighted the word providers here, right? My experience with empathic providers, typically, and obviously you're using this term broadly, which is, mm-hmm. is a good use of it, just for, for everyone else, don't say providers in place of physicians. If you can use physician, use physician, and then use provider uh, elsewhere where you're kind of broadly talking about all of the providers there. How much has this type of research come up in the application? Because it's not typical like micropiped in a wet lab uh, type research. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say that that in wilderness medicine are maybe the two most like talked about activities. Um, but virtually, I remember the first interview I had, it was like the first question about me, not just like, you know, why'd you apply to this school? Um, and so most people ask about it and most people like are excited to talk about it, which is, it's just fun. For yeah. Sure. I'm going to keep going back to that first paraphrased comment. You Mm -hmm. were yourself, Mm -hmm. which led to other people being interested in you. For sure. That's why you're on mission accepted. Six times you could have been on mission (laughs) accepted, uh, at least at this point, uh, versus being on application renovation, where we see students with much higher stats than yours, not getting in because they're not themselves. Right. And then the reviewers of those applications, the interviewers of those students are like, oh, great. Another mm-hmm. student who thinks they just mm-hmm. know everything and, and yeah. don't even need medical school. They just want the diploma. For so sure. um, amazing. Sure. Amazing. That's the difference uh, yeah. of, of what happens there. Uh, sexual health education, community service volunteer. You have here a not medical clinical. I, I put missing something here. I, I read through it and I'm just like, it's, it's missing something. Mm-hmm. Obviously not a huge deal, right? It's just, yeah. I read it and I'm like, is there, a, is there a little bit of a lack of reflection here or impact? Mm-hmm. So just, mm-hmm. just a little comment there for, for okay. someone watching, they can read it and, and try to see if mm-hmm. they, they see what I see. Okay. Uh, honors, awards, recognitions, nice little list here, which is awesome. Makes it nice and easy. Uh, and then your EMT experience, right? was a mm-hmm. huge experience for you, yep. uh, spending lots of time doing this. For sure. Did, what, what came first, chicken or egg? Did, did you being an EMT come after you were like, okay, I think I want to be a doctor. Let me go get some experience. Or did you become an EMT and then said, oh, this is pretty awesome. Let me go yeah. be a, a doctor now. It was certainly EMT and then medical school. I, didn't plan on going to medical school till late in my undergrad. I start, I became an EMT in high school and then started working as an actual EMT, um, my junior year. Um, but yeah, I had considered other professions. I considered physical therapy. I considered PA school, um, and working as an EMT in that environment, seeing the different roles, seeing how involved physicians were in care and getting to talk to more of them was instrumental and definitely, um, led me to where I am. So, to, to kind of paint a, a picture for someone watching, it wasn't like you were a business major and wanted to go be the CEO yeah. of a Fortune 500. You were interested in and around healthcare. It just wasn't like, oh, medicine, physician, uh, until a little bit later on. For sure. Okay, got yeah. it. Awesome. So uh, again, storytelling, uh, talking about kind of not just here are my duties, here's what I've learned, here's how it's prepared me. It's, let me show you who I am through these stories. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is that something, as you were going through this process, you had a hard time with? Was that something that that you learned from kind of like my books and and videos? Like, where did that come from? And and how much pushback internally and externally did you get with that type of writing? Yeah, so your videos were monumental for me. I watched a lot of them. I watched stuff like this. I watched application renovation, but the idea of telling a story, I just really 
the, the um, rhetoric that you portrayed through your videos and your advice really resonated with me. Um, so I, I took a lot from that. I also was a writing minor. And so like writing about myself was, that, that was useful for yeah. sure. Um, and so, and it was much more enjoyable to, to do that and almost felt cathartic to, to reflect on all of my experiences. Um, I, I like talk about going through the med school application process and it felt like I was writing a book about myself, like okay. a, like a hundred page book about myself. And, <laughs> you know, like that is a lot of focus on me, but, um, telling my story, I got that from, from your advice and it, it felt good to do that as opposed to just try to list stuff out and it felt yeah. cathartic. It's like, how, how can I write it in a, a sixth different way for my sixth activity, how dedicated yeah. and motivated I am. I'm like, yeah. yeah, like just, just be yourself. Awesome. Agreed. All right. Um, chemistry teaching assistant. So mm -hmm. you went from that C plus in gen chem to being a teaching assistant in OCHEM. So obviously, yeah, okay. uh, obviously very different subject matters, but, uh, mm -hmm. something clicked yeah. for you, which is great. Sure. Um, uh, research lab, which is awesome. Uh, medical clinic, uh, clinical physical therapy aid. A lot mm -hmm. of people are, would be afraid to put physical therapy aid on there. Cause they're like, well, it's going to mm -hmm. show I'm not sure I wasn't dedicated. Did mm -hmm. you have any of those thoughts putting physical In therapy? Way, aid on there? Yes. But I knew that that was a huge reason that I knew that I didn't want to do physical therapy and that I knew that I wanted to do, explore something else. And that was a huge like point in my story of what oriented me towards applying to medical school. And so to not include it felt so inauthentic. And I knew yeah. that it was a part of how, like to explain how I got. And honestly, most people ask me about my physical therapy experience and, and say, oh, it's great that you experienced something else and now know that you want to do medical school. Like multiple interviewers have mentioned yeah. that. So, yeah. It, it's very often a point of stress and concern of like, it's going to show I didn't know. I'm mm -hmm. like, it's actually a point of maturity to show yeah. that you explored and mm -hmm. asked yourself questions and tested, right? It's the scientific method. My yep. hypothesis is I want to be a physical therapist. You go and yep. test that hypothesis by being a PT aide. And then mm -hmm. you're like, nope, <laughs> that, yep. that is a null hypothesis right there. That, uh, I'm going to go test something else out. And so, again, it's, it's always, it seems like a concern for non-traditional students, especially students who were testing other healthcare fields, concerned about putting it on an application and talking about it. When in reality, for the most part, people will accept that as you have maturity to go and ask those questions and explore. So exactly. that's awesome. 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 All right. So from a um, an activity standpoint, lots of clinical experience. I don't think I saw any shadowing on your application. Did I miss that? Yeah, there's uh, one box with all of my shadowing. Um, um, let's see. Maybe it's at the end. You, I do you have started early. Okay. All right. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Okay. Got it. Yep. I see your shadowing here. It's because it started back in 2015. So it's, it's one of the older yeah. ones on there. Um, yeah. awesome. So lots of shadowing, uh, again, not extraordinary numbers, mm -hmm. but lots of variety, which is great. Mm -hmm. Um, you have intercollegiate athletics as your, your Frisbee team captain. So oh, yeah. lots of leadership experience there, mm -hmm. um, showing up artistic endeavors, being an artist and painting instructor as a most meaningful, amazing. Mm -hmm. So from mm -hmm. a activity standpoint, you've shown who you are through mm -hmm. athletics, through art, through your your kind of journey of testing, where do I wanna be in my life? What mm -hmm. do I wanna do when I grow up? Uh, mm -hmm. And so we've run the gamut. I, mm -hmm. I, I know who you are. I know mm -hmm. kind of this journey you've been on. And, and it's fun. And you have a hobby on there as well. Um, you have your, your rock climbing hobby on there, which is, mm -hmm. which is awesome and guitar playing. Yeah. And then we get to your personal statement mm -hmm. and we have just kind of your story of, of mm -hmm. kind of where you've been. I don't have a lot of, uh, specific comments on your personal statement cause it's, it does the job right? to get yeah. through it. And again, I go back to that paraphrase statement. You mm -hmm. were just yourself. You didn't try to go overboard and talk about all these skills that you have and how prepared you are for medical school. It's like, here's my journey to medical school. Here's my mm -hmm. journey to, to test this hypothesis that I want to be a physician. And yeah. you, you got there. Um, right again, about my, go ahead. just a note about my personal statement. Like yeah. 
like, like you said, like I just sort of wrote my story. I didn't have a million people who didn't know me very well, read it. I had like a writing professor that I trusted my mom, my dad, and maybe like one other trusted person read it. And I think that was huge because when you get a bunch of people to read it, they don't know you that well, they're going to provide different advice. And it, mm. I think it was really instrumental to it not being all over the place to not have a million people read it and only have trusted sources read it. Yes. Too many people is a bad thing because you get very differing advice sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and so you definitely want to keep it to a core group of people. Uh, mm -hmm. And I typically would recommend not having the people that you had read it. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I love a comment my, my mapped co-founder makes. She's like, have people read it who respect you, but not love yeah. you because yeah. they will give you the hard uh, kind of yeah. feedback. Uh, whereas kind of mom and dad are usually like, oh, it's great, you're perfect. <laughs> right. um, right. So it, it depends. I, I had highlighted in here this mm -hmm. journey that you put, right? My path was most certainly not line linear. I spent years considering this, that, and the other thing. Uh, and, and typically that's like, well, why are you putting that in there? But for you, that's your journey, right? That's mm -hmm. your truth. So mm -hmm. that's, that's great. I wanted, mm -hmm. Uh, you, you said here, I wanted that for myself at the end, mm -hmm. kind of knowing that you needed all of that experience. So you, um, you, you did kind of typically what I was like, you don't need to force this kind of like tying in the beginning and tying it into the end. At the very beginning, mm -hmm. you're like, goodbyes are hard. Yep. And then at the very end, you're like, uh, not having to say goodbye is so soon. Uh, you're a writing minor, so you obviously have some skills in writing uh, mm -hmm. that, that showed here. It worked mm -hmm. well. At the end, mm -hmm. I understand who you are, why mm -hmm. you're doing this. And obviously, 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 the schools that you applied to also understood who you are, why you're applying to medical school, why you want to be a doctor. You have mm -hmm. kind of a, a breadth of experiences that they want to talk uh, about. Um, mm -hmm. You have a really strong school list in terms of kind of not too out of state public school heavy, mm -hmm. but just lots of uh, typical private schools and, and places mm -hmm. that you want to go to. Have mm -hmm. you been surprised by any interviews that you have gotten or any, any interviews that you haven't gotten? For sure. Like, I mean, I think the expectation going in, like, you never know what's going to happen. I did apply MD and DO. Um, I got four DO offers for interviews and no more. And I applied to 10 DO schools. Um, and I didn't expect so many allopathic programs to offer me an interview, to be honest with you, because the expectation is my stats are below average. And we know that this isn't always um, meaningful of what's going to actually happen. But I was surprised to get so many interviews from different programs. But the funny thing is, is like all the interviews that I got were programs that had something that I really liked about it. Um, like a strong humanities program, um, like other things that are reflective of my application. Like those are the people that offer me an interview, which makes sense. Yeah. Um, but like the secondaries that I pine the most over were the ones that I ended up getting an interview invite for. So yeah. I think relating it back to your own application and how well of a fit you are for a school makes a big difference. How much research were you doing when you were looking at schools to apply to going, okay, like I need to find schools that have a humanities program that I may be mm -hmm. interested in, have some sort yeah. of like writing and medicine program, whatever. Yeah. Did you do a ton of research mm -hmm. in that way so that when those secondaries came, it was easy yeah, easier I, to say why this school. Yeah, I did. I did do a decent, I would estimate maybe an app, like maybe an hour or so per school before, like I wrote the secondaries more for some less for others, but, um, I, I pre-wrote most of my secondaries, but that changed because some of them had different questions and this and that, but I, I used the, the resource and I pre-wrote a lot of my secondaries, which made submitting them immediately so much easier um, but I did do a decent amount of research. If I could find somebody who went to that program through any connections, I did, um, which was only for a handful of schools, but that made a big difference as well. Especially when interviewing at that, those schools, you can talk about, I talked to this person who actually went here and they gave me this information. Um, so, yeah. Amazing. So congratulations on all your success. Thank mm -hmm. you for coming on uh, and sharing and being vulnerable. And uh, thank you for squeezing it, squeezing it in on an interview day. So I'm going to yep. let you go. Get back to your interview. Uh, you, you, you've been on a break. Uh, amazing, amazing success. Thank you again for coming on and sharing your story. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here.